The core solar forcing of the terrestrial climate lessons have recently come in the form of organizing the hundreds of papers on the topic, trying to give you a feel for what we tried to do in the book. In our last two episodes of Deeper Look, we went over the columns here, the types of forcing the sun offers for each and how you can narrow down this complexity to only a few channels or pathways of forcing, and into affected region. That's where we'll begin today. Adding on to what we learned in episode 70, looking below on the chart to see some more below the breakout of space weather forcing into the primary affected zones of the troposphere and the upper level atmosphere. Let's go ahead and look at this next level to get a foundation for when we move forward in upcoming episodes on each of the vectors at the bottom. Let's start with the initial breakout. After everything funnels into one of those two categories, we have the major cells in the troposphere, when we see most studies focused on the Hadley and polar cells there. You'll recall we looked at those in previous episodes. The cells circulate on vertical scales as opposed to the surface pressure, and they circulate the globe as well. This is where an incomparable amount of the solar forcing studies focus. We also have the major oscillations, circulations, and modes affected as well. FYI, there is likely interplay between these groups that isn't shown here, but it is not as significant and certainly far less studied than the vertical connections we do show. On the right side, we have the upper level jets, the polar vortices and the jet streams. Also note on the right, the magenta line coming from the ionization of solar flares over to the left. That's the solar flare x-ray effect on tropospheric patterns, which is indeed one of the known and significant pathways of the interplay. We just saw that paper this week about solar flares and the electrojets. Let's start bottom left on the chart. This is where the electrical coupling hits hard. The effect on the pressure cells we normally think comes hand in hand with the Hadley and polar cells, which again, rotate perpendicular to pressure cells in the vertical column, and circumnavigate the globe. In truth, the effect on the Hadley cells also influences the oscillations and circulations and modes indirectly, but this chart does give you that basic idea. Space weather affects the current going up and down through the atmosphere, and this affects the major tropospheric patterns. Both Hadley and polar cells intensify their pressure upon high space weather events, that's high and low, with more homogeneous circulation vertically and calmer, more predictable patterns. There is also a noted thermal effect at the poles where particle energy has better influence over the surface due to lessened sunlight impact. High solar activity leads to positive phase for most of the major patterns, which tend to lead to hotter conditions worldwide and with the extremes of high and low in those phases contributing to what we consider extreme weather events and extreme swings in conditions. Up next, bottom right, we're looking at the UV and X-ray effect on the upper atmosphere. It is interesting to note that the electrical coupling we saw before mostly hits the higher layers of the magnetic field and ionosphere, and then channels down through the electric circuit and geomagnetic system to the troposphere. Meanwhile, the wave energy makes it right to the upper atmosphere, but stays there with its primary effect. The magenta line here of text requires some explanation. X to the PEN is particle impacts of proton, electron, and neutrons, and the lambda symbol, which looks like an upside-down Y, is the symbol for wavelength. This would be the EM waves, like solar flares, as opposed to particles. High solar activity strengthens both sets of jets, while low activity weakens them. It's that weak activity in the polar vortices that increases cold events in the wintertime, while the weakness in the jet streams brings more wild weather, like things like the Omega Block phenomenon. This is as good as it gets for a one-page summary. In upcoming episodes, we're breaking out each of those lower columns into more detail as the video version of our latest textbook continues. One of those upcoming lessons will be on cloud forcing, which you might have noticed on the left side in black as not fitting into those two bottom categories. This is sort of true and untrue since it does have an effect, but it is so unique and variable, it requires a lesson all its own. Until next time, be safe everyone.